How would you change the world if a simple stick was the only tool you had? How would you? Well, as you can see, my principal had his own ideas. He tried to change my world with a simple stick. It worked, but only for a short period of time. But before I left his office, I already had other schemes how to get out of school. But all credit goes to my principal, Mr. Fenter, because I can promise you every single hiding was justified and deserved. And my mom can concur to that. But on the 26th of December, 1998, everything changed. I was lying on a wooden jetty, trying to regain consciousness while being paralyzed. I can still hear that snap as my head hit the sandbank. It sounded like a twig breaking. I didn't lose consciousness immediately. That sound reverberated through my head as I lied, listening to my friends joking on the riverbank. I was floating face down, struggling to breathe, paralyzed, and there was nothing I could do. How does your life change? How do you adapt to that dis disruptive change? Your dreams as you thought you had it, it's all gone. You can't see it anymore. Life as you knew it is absolutely gone. I ended up in hospital. And my dreams as I knew it, wasn't there anymore. I had to make new ones. Life was difficult. But then, we can all sit and draw lines in the sand and look at our lives that way. But we won't get anywhere. You see, we need to get up and step over those lines. I spent four and a half months incarcerated between hospital and rehab centre, learning new things. In the end, it was time to go back home, my haven of safety. But as they pushed me into home, negotiating the hours through rooms and dropping me off in the lounge, I felt so not at home. Everything was different. They didn't move the furniture. The TV was still in the same place. The silent parrot sat in the corner. But I changed. I'm the one that changed in this environment. So, some way, somehow, I needed to change my life. I spent a lot of time sitting in front of a computer, trying to regain some form of dignity, trying to regain my life again. See, there wasn't one major payout of funds. I didn't have life insurance. My only source of income was my parents and my computer. So what I did I set up a working station. In front of me I had my monitor that was eye level. On my head I had a set of earphones to control my computer. In front of me I had a phone, a speakerphone. And next to it I had a little dial stick that I purchased from the local hardware. And I used that dial stick to phone. And the world was my oyster. Bring it on, baby. I can now do it all, man. I can work my computer. 
cool. But the only problem was, you see, my little Pentium 1. Yeah, you love it, Pentium 1. I, mean. <laughs> I had a dial-up modem, 28800, top of the range. My little Pentium 1 just couldn't handle the processing power to voice-activated software. And sometimes that software would freeze. And I had to call somebody just to move a mouse to on the icon and click the button. And that was frustrating because when I thought I had this independence or this electronic device, I actually didn't because it would constantly freeze, constantly freeze. And that was freaking irritating. Some days it was so irritating that I didn't call somebody. I just looked at this computer and swore at it. It was much more satisfying. <laughs> uh, that's probably why they call it a Fred, eh? A freaking ridiculous electronic device. But that all changed one afternoon. You see, nobody was home. And I was busy working on my stock computer. And guess what? It froze. Mom was out running errands, and there was nobody to change and click on that little icon. So I took that cheap little dial stick, and I bit on it, and I maneuvered the mouse so the little cursor was right on that button. And I took that stick and I smacked the mouse button. Wow. Now I can control my mouse, and I reset the software. I don't need people anymore. I can now move my mouse with a stick. You're almost probably thinking, guess what? Primates have been using sticks for years to hunt for termites. Yeah, I'm a little bit slow on the uptake. But now I've got a stick. So as soon as mom got home, I told her, get a piece of press stick. Put it on the end of the stick and a little piece of rubber on the back. I turned my mouse back to front. I put my keyboard in front of me and I threw away the microphone. With that stick and that piece of press stick, I could control my whole computer. Any software on it, I could left click, right click, I could type, I could phone. A whole new world opened up. And if you pushed me outside with my manual wheelchair and my stick, I could hunt for my own freaking termites. <laughs> but that changed, that little stick changed the world. I started a multi-million rand company designing electric wheelchairs that could drive anywhere, everywhere, on the beach, to change my life and to change the lives of others. The chairs can tilt, recline, elevate, stand up. They have headlights, flicker lights, rear lights. They even integrate with mobile devices. Imagine the freedom a stick can provide. Now I had my beautiful stick. And I could drive myself outside on my own and hunt my own freaking termites. But there's a little story I'd like to tell you what the stick actually did. I got a request from New Zealand to build a wheelchair for a little boy. His name was Ollie, Oliver for short, or Ollie for Oliver for short. Or the other one around, you get what I mean. Oliver had Mushkett syndrome, where his joints were very painful. He had cardiac murmurs, spinal deformity, and shortened limbs. So he couldn't run around them all as soon as he became older. But why would they find me to build a wheelchair for a boy like that? Certainly because they could purchase one. 
Oliver wasn't that bad. But you see, Oliver wasn't the problem. It was his two little brothers. They loved fishing. They loved running around on the beach and camping. And Oliver just couldn't do that anymore. He had to sit on the side and watch his brothers have fun. That was very sad. And when I got this brief from New Zealand, I read through it. And I grabbed this stick and I opened up a CAD program and I started to design. Designed this wheelchair for Oliver. And with my team, we sat around the round table in the workshop with some inyama and we discussed how are we going to change this boy's life. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what we did. A nine-year-old kid now has the freedom to drive wherever he wants to. He can be a kid again. He can drive on the beach. He can have fun. No more does he have to chase his brothers. His brothers now run off to him. <laughs> he can drive in the sand, in the water. He can be a nine-year-old boy. And not only does that free him, but that gives his parents independence. Oliver can have fun again. We are defined by two main points in life. All of us are defined by these two factors. Our tenacity and our persistence when we have lost everything. And our attitude when we got it all again. Thank you for your time.